hello everybody this is Dean from Motion Media and today we're going to uh, uh, do a little supplement to an earlier tutorial that I recently did about using the uh, hair and fur modifier in Max with V-Ray um, as I've been using it lately I've found uh, sort of several I don't know if I want to say issues, but ways to use it better, more efficiently, and get a, a much higher quality look. So I'm going to recap what I did before, which is show you in general how you use the hair and fur modifier with Max, and then we'll go one step further and and uh, make it look a lot prettier and solve some rendering issues. So I've already created just a, a simple scene, a V-Ray light, a V-Ray camera, a sphere, and you saw me just put the, the fur on it. I'm going to uh, uh, make a V-Ray material, just a standard, and uh, give it a value of 1, and apply that to the sphere. Okay, so if you didn't watch last time, uh, this is the setup for getting it to work with V-Ray. So if we just hit render, Okay, you see it's doing something here, and we did the the sphere is black. That's why you don't see it. It's rendering, and you see nothing. Okay. All right. The reason why is we have to go into the effects, click on shag fur, or excuse me, hair fur, and use MR primitive. That's the first step. Second step is to uh, turn off tip fade, turn on apply MR shader, mental ray shader, and then we're going to use the V-Ray hair material. And we'll use like a blonde matted. We're going to drag and drop that into here. Instance, and we'll hit render again. You'll see we have hair this time. Okay. Now I'm not gonna wait for it to do the whole thing, but obviously now we have we have hair. So this is kind of the the uh, basics to getting it to work with V-Ray. There's two other things here I want to touch on. One is you can see that the hair uh, doesn't have any opacity. Okay, it just they're like little strands of uh, splines, if you will, that taper slightly. Now, you know, there's a few things we could do. I'm going to cancel this for a moment. We can go here to general parameters, and you see it's got. Uh, root thickness is 15 and the tip is 0 so you can see you know even with it being 0 it still kind of comes down to a point and this works well for you know weeds or grass or what have you but it doesn't work so well for hair so what we're gonna do is we're going to add here in the opacity slot of the hair material, the V-Ray hair material, is a V-Ray map called uh, Hair Info Text. Okay? And what this does is it applies opacity down the length of your hair. Now, I'm just going to give you this advice in advance, but to make things go much faster for the moment, you want to click on Opaque for Shadows and Opaque for GI. So if we hit re render, it's going to take a little second here. <clears throat> You're going to see that it now applies opacity to the hair. I've been using this with characters recently, and you know, there's all kinds of different ways to use this. 
and uh, you notice here like it seems to be looks to me like it's doing the reverse okay so it's it's opaque on the tip and then more transparent towards the root so let's switch that and see what happens so if we switch these two colors swap let's see if we get the right look and there's a a lot of hours of waiting and experimenting with this so I'm hopefully going to uh, shave a lot of that time off no pun intended okay so you can see now it looks like we have the opacity going in the right direction um, but you can see the effect that we get put on the alpha channel here you know it almost has this blurring type of effect to it uh, you know because it's it's adding this opacity towards the tips and when the tips have um, such thickness like this they it, it looks like depth of field almost when you render it out and I'm gonna let it go a little further alright so that's one way I seem to get the both the me the best luck with this way uh, using the hair and fur color let's try that for a second the um, the other issue that we're going to look at okay so you can see here and it's it's helpful I, I noticed as I tried this on uh, I was working like I said on a character's hair and um, I had several pieces that make up the hair and I noticed based on normals you know sometimes one of these output methods works better than another um, but ultimately I found that this version uh, using the hair and fur color to define that opacity for me seemed to work best and you can see what's going on there now the reason it has some color in the alpha channel is because it's based on the hair and fur color you can stop that and go to hair and fur opacity and you see it already looks a lot better and we can make it look even better by making the root value smaller and then adding more hairs and we're going to do that in a second to show this second um, part of this that's uh, problematic okay so it looks like that took the color out of the alpha and it also looked as though it didn't do quite as good of a job there looks a little closer to the beginning one so we'll go back to this alright and again I encourage you to experiment with which one works better now there's a second part of this that really got frustrating for me and this is something I just haven't dealt with in a while and uh, it took me a while to figure it out but I'm gonna see if I can get it to do it here let's just crank this up to like a hundred thousand and let's make the tip or excuse me, the root thickness like one, eh, maybe like five. Right, let's do two hundred thousand. And uh, let's just leave it at that and see what else. See if we can get it to do it. So what I'm looking for here in my render dialog box is um, something called updating, or excuse me, unloading geometry. And when V-Ray performs tasks like this that require, I guess, buffering, much like uh, um, displacement, uh, there's a sort of a buffer range there in V-Ray that you need to adjust. Otherwise, once you see your renderer start to say unload it, there we go, unloading geometry, basically just cancel because this is never going to work and it's going to take forever and you can see what's happening right here is it's only been calculating for 20, 19, 20, 21 seconds, 22 seconds but this is how long it's estimating and you can see it's climbing way faster than we're catching up so it's just it's a it's a losing proposition so how do you fix that if you if you've got if your hair needs to be like that how do you fix it so you gotta come in here and this again you'll find this solves a lot of your displacement problems 
But the answer is right here, the dynamic memory limit. So I'm going to go to 496 for the moment. We'll try it again and see if that got rid of it. But that's basically the the answer, and you ultimately will need RAM. I mean, you you there will be a limit by which you can't go outside your RAM, but more RAM is what uh, will solve this problem for you. On this particular system, I have 48 gigs of RAM, uh, quite a lot, and uh, but not a lot by today's standards, I suppose. That's fairly average. But we'll see if that solves our problem here. Um, so it's just kind of a frustrating thing that if you haven't had to deal with it before, you know, you're just going to be frustrated with how long it takes to render even the, you know, something that looks even remotely good uh, seems to always go outside that limit of 400. So I'm not going to let it render the whole thing here, but we'll uh, we'll take a peek. Okay, so you can see <clears throat> we never got the unloading geometry um, message, or not yet anyways. It can happen basically anywhere in the render. Um, but we seem okay for the second. And I'm going to let it go here for just a moment so you can see how much better it looks. It's definitely going to take a while. But that is to be expected. And again, I've found when I'm doing characters, I usually have to use, you know, three or four different types of hair emitters to get what I want. You know, like, I have a character who has a ponytail, so one emitter does all the hair that's pulled back. Another emitter is the actual ponytail. There's two other emitters that represent the left and right bangs. Um, so uh, you can see here, this is taking a bit. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pause this for just a second and come back after it's got some of it rendered so you don't have to listen to me blather. I'll be right back. All right, so <clears throat> I'm just going to stop it here. It's going to take a while. But you can see you have a much finer look there. And, you know, this isn't fully refined, but uh, I think you get the idea of uh, how to use those tools and uh, also how to prevent and deal with the unloading geometry phenomenon. So I hope this was helpful, and we will talk to you again soon.